Ah, here's one that I like. Uh, Thomas Essen says online references, online references to particular myths outcomes to tend, can tend to boil down to just the busted plausible confirmed headline neglecting nuance. Um, do you sometimes have to qualify fans' memories of your conclusions? Yes. And does a myth come to mind where you feel the nuance behind your conclusion has become misconstrued? Yes. Fans' memories of our conclusions are entirely wrong in one of our most famous, famous myths, which is um, if you are standing too close to the edge of a train platform when a train goes by, can the air pressure shift as it comes by, suck you into the train uh, or off the platform? And the answer is no. Uh, we found the opposite, in fact, that the train is pushing air and it gives you a little bit of a push back. However, there's been at least two news stories that I remember of people who pulled someone back just as the train was approaching and said, Ooh, wow, we learned from Mythbusters that that was dangerous. And we were all like, actually, I th think you learned the opposite from Mythbusters. So that's one. But the one that I am still litigating is running in the rain, which was the very, very first shoot after the show was awarded. That was the first myth we executed upon the show awarding and the crew showing up. Um, and I, I did uh, 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 Crooked Media's Love It or Leave It last year with John Lovett here in San Francisco. So much fun. I love those guys' podcasts. I love hearing them talk about the world. John Lovett is a, he's hilarious. He's got a massive brain. He's a lovely human being. Uh, and he wanted to talk running in the rain. And he was like, blah, 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 about running in the rain. And I was like, yeah, sure. And I said specifically on the podcast, I'm not going to relitigate the story. And he was like, no, 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 fair enough. And then he went into it and was like, but if you're running, would the water get... And the thing that I want to say is, it is the myth that the most number of people that approach me to talk about the show want to talk about. I think of you every time it rains. I think about running in the rain. Let me just explain that the, the, the nuance for running in the rain was that we found under extremely controlled conditions, i.e. no wind whatsoever, with rain coming straight down, that it was better to walk than run in the rain. But the difference between walking and running was on the order of several grams of water, like a fraction of an ounce. And just to be clear, a gram of water is one cubic centimeter of water. Um, it is a very small amount. So we're talking like five cubic centimeters of water. Maybe. Ergo, when Carrie and Tori and Grant tested running in the rain, they came to a different result than we did. So I consider this to be... How are you going to test something? You have to test it under controlled conditions. They tried it out in the world. They had wind. It was changing. And that's a valid test if you could do it over and over and over and over and over again, logging the wind speed every time. Unfortunately, in the confines of a TV show, that's not feasible. And so, and this isn't any kind of like bragging, but I think of our experiment as, as the, the more straightforward one because it was super controlled conditions. Again, 40 foot ceilings, you do have wind currents in a large building, et cetera. But I, I feel like running is slight, walking is slightly better than running, but again, by grams, and it doesn't change my behavior in the rain. And yet people are still coming up and talking about that story. It's absolutely Hilarious. Uh, oh, animals? Okay, hold on, let's see here. Uh, Fire Bernie, Fire Bernie <laughs> says, what myth's outcome really surprised you at the end? Um, I have to say, the one that, that surprised me the most, it's one of my all-time favorites, was um, golf ball car. We, the... A golf ball travels through the air the way it does because of the little dents on it. 455? Is that the number? I can't quite remember. Uh, there's Those detents on a golf ball create a lovely little slipstream. Each one gathers a little bit of wind in it, and that wind creates this little, from what I understand, this little tiny vortex that creates a sort of 
coating around the ball of air currents. It works similarly to a pickup truck. When a pickup truck is going uh, and the top is, the turno is off and the, the bed is open and the, the tailgate is up, um, you can get a little wind current in there inside the bed of the pickup truck and that air current of circulating air uh, in as you're driving in the back of your pickup truck actually helps air move over your pickup truck and down onto the road. It makes it more aerodynamic. And the same thing happens to a golf ball. Uh, and you can actually buy smooth golf balls and hit them with your club and they won't fly nearly as far. Uh, and so this myth is that you could put golf ball dents on a car, it would get better fuel efficiency. And this is a great one to test because there's all sorts of companies selling stuff you can apply to your car to give it little dents. And I, every time I smell that, I'm like, yeah, that smells like a scam. So we tried that stuff and we didn't get much results. And then we wanted to try it in scale uh, which, which involved actually getting a, 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 taking a car and covering it with about 300 pounds of clay. We used like a whole bunch of students from the Academy of Arts uh, Automotive Division, Automotive Design Division. We covered this car in clay and ran it for one mile. Oh my God, that's right. I can barely describe to you how difficult it is to test fuel efficiency for reals under discrete circumstances because there is no proper flow meter which will tell you to the granularity you need how much gas has passed this point in a hose. That's a really difficult question to ask. And so we ended up, after many different episodes of trying different kinds of fuel efficiency, for the golf ball car we alighted on using a single gallon of fuel in a holder that only held a gallon and we filled it up, weighed it before the test, at, the car drove a mile and weighed it afterwards. That's about as succinct as you can get for fuel efficiency. And we did the, so we did, the, we covered the car with clay uh, and then when we ran one mile test and then we carved a thousand detents about this big in the clay. Jamie came up with this really ingenious way of cutting the clay. It was like a hard wire of spring steel sticking out of a plexi ring and you could just like turn it, 100, turn it 180 degrees and this thing would pop out. And then we took all that clay, we pulled out from the detents and we put it in the trunk of the car so that the weight of the car wouldn't change, just the surface. And we ran it again on the one gallon of fuel on the fuel cell and we found a four, I think a 14% improvement in fuel efficiency. And just to be clear, like that's massive. Your mood is the biggest driver of your fuel efficiency, bar none. Your mood can affect your fuel efficiency up to 20%. I swear to God, every time you're stepping on those brakes, every time you're stomping on that gas, angry dude, you are wasting your fuel. Uh, that is the biggest driver of, of fuel efficiency. So all the other methods we ever tested on the show came to like 2%, 3%, these tiny little fractional differences, which sure, in rally racing, that's gonna make all the difference in the world. In regular driving, not so much. But when we did the, the, the golf ball car, a 14% fuel efficiency increase is impossible and amazing. Um, we also did that in one take. We shot one take because really specifically, we were both so surprised and the camera coverage was good enough. We're like, never gonna get that performance again. Let's just hold the one we've got. Um, yeah, that was really, really lovely. All right, let's see here. Thank you for watching that video. Are you as sick of the tosses to membership as I am? Good, because here's a brand new one that I recorded today and it's nice and short. There are three tiers to Tested Membership and they all offer awesome stuff. Find out about it by clicking the join link below. We'll see you there.